Hello and welcome back. Uh, now we are going to have a session uh, about a view from the top with uh, one of the industry's top chief executives. Uh, my name is Philip Stafford. I'm a journalist at the Financial Times. And uh, joining me today is uh, Stefan Bujna, chief executive of Euronext, uh, which runs not only many exchanges around Europe, but also many central securities depositories. Welcome, Stefan. It's the same Good shame morning. we can't do this in person. A shame we can't do this in person, but uh, next time maybe. We're talking about digital uh, transformation here, a uh, big topic in, in, in the conference. When this comes up, what's the, the, the biggest issue that comes to mind uh, for you and for Euronex with, uh, uh, when it comes to the next generation and where Euronex goes next? Okay, obviously the, the elephant in the room is, uh, is distributed ledger, but I want to maybe qualify uh, this uh, trend, which sometimes confines to a buzzwords for certain user cases that are not uh, combat proven. So clearly, um, uh, distributed ledger uh, opens a, an avenue of uh, of usage that 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 fulfills some of the of the tasks that were part of the historical business of market infrastructure. When you go to the the reality, uh, you touch uh, two very fundamental limits. One is obviously speed. So the closer you get to trading, the more irrelevant uh, a blockchain and distributed ledger is. The closer you get to uh, to um, depository, the more relevant it might be. So the first limit is time. The second limit is uh, regulation. Uh, one uh, chief regulator told me one day, why should I trust more? Uh, a decentralized system, I don't know rather than a centralized system, I do know. And if there is a problem, how can I be sure that no one is going to say, we don't know who is responsible, the problem is somewhere in a Huawei server. And, um, and having, uh, uh, from a regulator point of view, the capability to track accountability for managing the system and uh, the capability to transition for something which is called centralized, a CSD starts with a C for central, uh, is uh, is something that that touches some of the limits. So I'm not saying uh, 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 it's relevant at all. I mean, progress are being made, and we are spending a lot of time and resources to address precise, to precisely and to identify uh, the areas where where this change can be material and concrete and relevant. And we 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 believe that they might come somewhere, but not with the the speed that is sometimes estimated. We are not on the verge of a Kodak moment for for market infrastructure because of of, of blockchain big time. What I would like to underline is that there is another space uh, which is totally underestimated, which is the amount of uh, investment innovation that is required by uh, cyber uh, security risk. The real change of this of the digital environment we operate in is not driven by the uh, uh, positive uh, uh, upwards opportunities generated by distributed ledger and blockchain. The real fundamental issue is how we defend what we do and the core of what we are uh, supposed to deliver to market use participants with with the, the relevant uh, shields adjustment that are compatible with our operating performance that are not slowing down what we do uh, while protecting uh, the, um, the the safety of, of our operations. Has, has that changed? I mean, cybersecurity seems to be one of those things that's always been with us ever since we started using the internet. But I mean, have you noticed a, a qualitative step up in terms of, of the the attacks that you're you're repelling, the the sophistication of them? Uh, has that changed a lot? And over yes. what time frame are we talking? Yes, about? yes, yes. We 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 are in a, in a, in a, in a usual debate uh, between the sword and the shield, uh, where. Um, Artillery and and and, and walls, uh, where uh, the uh, the the bad guys, the hostile uh, uh, capabilities are getting more and more sophisticated, more and more uh, fierce, and um, and the need for all of us to be properly uh, protected and to deploy more more guards on the walls, uh, more uh, people to repair the walls, uh, more uh, guards on on the gates, more lockers on the gates. Uh, has, has become uh, very, very intensive. So if, if you ask me what are the, the main uh, changes in digitalization, there are, yes, some uh, uh, positive opportunities to come uh, because of, uh, 
of DT, uh, but there are many defensive uh, requirements that are uh, absolutely uh, uh, demanded now uh, in the field of, of cybersecurity investment. And presumably that gets harder the the bigger that the and more diverse that the company gets. I mean, you, you, you've just bought Borsa Italiana, but uh, you know there's, there's been a, you know other um, uh, other acquisitions. You know, the, the, there are so many other gates and entry points into the, into not, the not necessarily because one of, one of the aspect uh, uh, not necessarily no. one of the aspect of cyber security is that uh, the bigger you get, the more uh, capable you are to invest in scalable uh, resources. For example, uh, when I took over Euronex in 2015, we didn't have 24-7 uh, uh, cyber security capabilities. Now we have for the group really? a very, very large, very large and very intense 24-7 uh, capabilities. Uh, we have uh, we have interconnection with other market participants to make sure that uh, we share uh, information on hostile uh, moves. Uh, we have a cooperation uh, uh, framework to, to exchange uh, uh, views through third parties uh, about um, the most appropriate uh, uh, answers to hostile moves. So um, this, this, this is, this, these are things you can do when you have scale. Uh, the smaller you get, the more vulnerable you are, and the bigger you get, the more uh, uh, resources you can deploy to address uh, uh, threats that have changed magnitudes. Uh, I mean, this, this, the, 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 the weak uh, guys, the most common victims are, are usually uh, small companies or, or companies that uh, do not have the, the scale of the resources to invest in IT. I mean, uh, we, we, we are uh, better prepared than we were when we were a small company. Do you find, do you find yourself, because of that, do you find you, uh, you as a bigger company now, are more uh, wary about using a smaller company because of, that, of that, that, those limitations? As for a yeah. third, for, uh, to use a third, as a third party provider? Well, we using a third party provider for certain aspects of cybersecurity is a must because uh, none, no, not a single player in the industry, in the, in the landscape, uh, can concentrate uh, uh, a real time information on, on the bad guys' uh, moves. Uh, you need to use a third party provider to consolidate uh, all the, uh, the, 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 the expertise and the experience on, on, on the, the worst thing that can happen and to mutualize the, the, um, the, the best way to, to react to them. So it's a combination of, of spending resources to hire the right uh, third party provider that can consolidate information and in house having a very large team. Uh, and, and, and changing completely the culture the, the, of, of the organization. I don't want to, to spend too much time on cybersecurity, but since your question was, was what are the main changes driven by digitalizations, I, I really wanted to, 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 to raise, uh, the, to focus on the fact that in addition to what everybody is focusing on in terms of quote unquote good news looking forward, there are a lot of digitalization transformation that are driven by the, the way we operate our systems today is fundamentally different from the way we were operating them 10 years ago because of the cyber risk. The interactions with the rest of the world are different because of cyber risk. One thing I did want to have a chat uh, to, to discuss, um, high on the, the agenda within the, the, the EU um, is the Capital Markets Union. Uh, and I was just asking you know, what, what the, the current hurdles are um, that you feel towards towards building it and uh, you know what uh, what Euronex is, is in particular doing uh, towards uh, helping uh, build it. Yeah. So as, as you know, for us, it's, it's part of our DNA. I mean, one of the the side achievement of the capital market union, which is not driven by regulation, is what Euronex has become over the years, because now we, we, we trade on Euronex platform 25%. Of, uh, of the equity trading in Europe. We have uh, something like 12 billion of average uh, daily volumes. Uh, we have uh, uh, something like uh, 6.4 trillion of aggregate market capitalizations, which is uh, of the companies listed on Euronext platform, which is a, a multiple of what is listed in, in, in Frankfurt and almost 40% uh, um, uh, more than what is listed in London. So the reality is that within the European continent and the Republic of Ireland, we, we have built uh, a very solid single liquidity pool 
single or a book, a single technology platform. So that, that's, that's one aspect of the capital market union for real. When we move to the regulatory world, um, I think things have, have started slowly because by nature, uh, capital market union is a collection of, of initiatives uh, that are not as binary as uh, in the banking union where it is uh, solvency, uh, capital requirements, uh, uh, liquidity, etc. And um, and I think things are moving in, the, in in the right directions. We have a good dialogue with the Commission to move slowly and slowly towards uh, uh, the adoption of a simplification test to make sure that uh, whatever is done uh, in the in the in the, the, the legislative package of the capital market union is making the life of, of European market participants in the continental Europe and the Republic of Ireland more um, in, in, in an easier way and in a more flexible way rather than more complicated. It's clear that the, the concept of a competitiveness test is now uh, developing. There is a clear awareness uh, within the European Union and the European Commission that uh, the world is not going to be as uh, cozy as it was when uh, London That's was it. a just financial centre of the European Union. Well, 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 no well, just to clarify, um, sorry to interrupt you here, Stefan. Uh, when you say a competitive set, competitiveness test, what exactly are you? you uh, well, well, the idea, the idea, the idea would be that before uh, implementing any rule, to pose and to check who are going to be the winners, who are going to be the losers, and to decide whether, uh, if there are some losers somewhere, uh, it's totally accepted because the overall benefits are bigger than, than, than the cost for certain constituencies. The idea is to avoid unwanted consequences or what I, I, I call in, a, in, a, in, a, in slang sometimes the unilateral disarmament of the European Union, which, which uh, in the past may add the temptation of creating a, an open bar to, to welcome uh, everyone to, to milk uh, the, the European blue chip companies and the, and the 450 million uh, households uh, uh, that have uh, that are that need to 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 to, to metabolize their savings. So um, the fact that um, that 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 the, the European Commission is now aware of the simplification needs of the competition competitiveness needs is 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 changing a little bit the direction. The fact that we we might move towards more regulation, more united regulation rather than than similar regulation with in the context of directives is, is, is changing a lot. And I, I would expect an, a strong acceleration of, uh, of, the, of the delivery now. My apologies for interrupting your, your flow there, but uh, um, the, if you, you, you know you you happen to, to pass a uh, you know a you know, the chief regulation in the corridor, I mean, what would exactly, what would your, your pitch be? The one thing that, that, that's, um, that would need to be focused on uh, you know, the, to, to really affect more uh, more change, uh, faster change. I mean, is is there a particular thing that you, that in your mind needs to be fixed? Yeah, I, I think uh, the first thing is to to move uh, more quickly from directive to regulation. I mean, you know, in the European environment, when directives are meant to to create similar regulations, but but uh, regulations are either identical or different, and when they are similar, they are different. And, uh, and, and the idea of creating a single rule book for certain things uh, through uh, what is called technically under EU law regulation is very important. And there are two fields where it can be done very quickly. The first one is listing. Today we have uh, uh, rules on, on prospectus that are similar in Europe but are not identical. And, 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 and the idea would be to create one single format uh, for, uh, the, um, for the prospectus uh, uh, with, with similar rules, of, uh, with identical rules on, the, on the, the other language of the prospectus uh, across the continent. And that could change everything because then you will have one single standard form to list a company across Europe. The second thing is about reporting. Uh, Non-financial uh, uh, reporting is the urgency because everyone is struggling in Europe with the all sorts of, of, of frameworks and rules to report ESG uh, performance. And clearly having identical, an identical framework to report non-financial performance would be a, a good starting point and to proceed later on to uh, financial reporting in a totally identical format. And, uh, and the I third thing... Sorry, sorry. No, sorry, third thing. Pilot, pilot. And the third thing is to, is to as, as convergence of insolvency rules is going to take time. It's, it's a paramount uh, objective. Uh, uh, we, have, uh, we have insolvency uh, and bankruptcy rules that are very different in the EU. 
obviously with the same Romano Germanic uh, backbone. Uh, uh, with only limited country being extremely influenced by uh, by common law concept, but but uh, uh, clearly we we need to to create a, a, a similar uh, insolvency set of rules in order to because that that's that's really a, a one size fits all concept to unlock a lot of convergence issues in terms of both debt and even equity to the extent uh, the emir uh, or and the, the clearing is related to insolvency rules. But to do that, it will take time. So the idea would be to create a, a European uh, credit instrument with uh, uh, sui generis, its own uh, uh, insolvency regime, similar to what's happening to in the UC twelve for, for, for mutual instruments. So, so there are things that uh, it's basically to apply the 80, 20 old rules with a, with a very small number of, of instruments that will become identical. You create the Schengen of capital markets. You create the, the euro currency of capital markets. You create uh, the, the, the single market uh, uh, of capital markets. You need to, to focus on instruments where having identical rules will unlock a lot of, of, of values and flows. And I think these are three strong examples. And presumably, when if, if to do that, the, it would be fully uh, fully digital. Um, there would be would that actually be quite a, a operationally a uh, a relatively straightforward thing to do, or is that actually you know operation you, quite a difficult challenge? No, I think from an operational point of view, the few examples I've mentioned are, are relatively straightforward. It's just about uh, uh, format. I mean, for, for example, today in terms of, of listing uh, and prospectus, yes, the rules are similar, but in some countries you need to file a prospectus with the, the, the local uh, regulator or supervisor and to the local exchange. I mean, having one single prospectus across the continent would be great. In some countries, you can use uh, another European language uh, not to mention the the one of uh, uh, the, the, the official language of the Republic of Ireland, uh, and, and in other countries you cannot do it uh, except for a small executive summary. Having a single format for uh, what you can do in your home language and in another European language uh, could could be a game changer for foreign investors. Um, the same for non financial uh, 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 reporting. I mean uh, having uh, now, the uh, metric system of uh, non-financial uh, reporting will solve a lot of headache for many market participants to, to identify uh, who is doing what and what is green, what is brown. And, uh, and that these are things that, that I believe uh, could, could uh, be done without any significant digital uh, investment but because it's, it's more about uh, standardization of, of, of uh, requirements. One area that 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 um, of, of your business that uh, you've spoken about in the past is uh, probably needing further digitization. I'm, I'm sure one of great interest to to um, our viewers here today is uh, in the CSD landscape. Now you're next. You run four mm -hmm. CSDs, uh, and you've got more than six trillion of, of euros um, under, of assets under custody. I believe. Mm -hmm. um, how much further has has that digitization of of, of post trade still got to go and and um you know how you know to what extent will how long do you think it might actually take before we, it, it becomes you know part of what you might call the 21st century well it it's quite normal than uh, digitalization on the, the least uh, competitive part of the business is taking longer than what it, uh, it happened uh, what happened for 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 the trading part and that's normal because um, Speed is not of uh, the same uh, importance for custody and settlement as it is for, for trading. Uh, also, uh, uh, CSDs are large national digital notaries, and notaries are not necessarily the fastest innovators. Uh, so, uh, what, what we what we are doing is is is, is very simple and, and robust. We, 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 we historically had uh, uh, operated Interbolsa in Portugal. We acquired VPS in Norway in 2019, VP Securities in Copenhagen in 20, and Monte Titoli in, in, in Italy in 21. And the idea is that CSDs are local, 
are very local, and I come back to this point, but they should not, they have no reason to stay isolated. So we have, what we are doing is to organize the convergence, not of the, the existing backbone of the technology stack of, the, of those CSDs, but the convergence of the additional layers that, that need to be um, deployed to, to take those platforms to the next level. So regulators in each country are very, very cautious about um, uh, keeping at home uh, uh, the, the proper uh, technology uh, that is not outsourced uh, because they want they want this critical function of uh, having the local notary uh, remaining local critical and also you know for example in Ireland the the, the CSD solution which is now European Bank is collecting uh, the stamp duty in in Norway uh, the CSD where you have segregated accounts is producing. Uh, uh, capital gains tax returns for the Norwegian uh, IRS in, uh, in 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 Denmark the the CSD is is the P pivot the pillar that allows for for the securitization of mortgage certificates and and in Italy it's a fundamental element of the sovereign debt uh, uh, chain so in each country the the, the, the regulators have a sort of special relationship with the local CSDs and have sorts of super special local requirements. So what we, we are trying to invent within the Euronext of CSD program is a way to, to maintain that, that, uh, that identity, to use basically the European Union motto to be united in diversity. So uh, we try to keep diversity where regulators are insisting to keep the local identity and we try to build unity in, uh, in, in the new uh, additional layers of, of technology. That's for, for the cost and for the operations. But on the top of that, it's true that all these CSDs have their local dreams of, of selling added value solutions to clients in terms of activating the data lakes provided by their activities. And what we are observing is that by getting them to scale, which now six, more than six trillion of assets under custody, we can develop together offerings to issuers in particular and to market participants in general um, which which activate together collective uh, commercial uh, uh, solutions which would have been too complicated to develop at the to develop at the local level so um uh, that's the challenge um, and one point that uh, often comes up is is the question about how long it might take to to get a full dematerialization of shares. I mean, quite an obvious digital uh, uh, change. I mean, the US went through it a few years ago. Uh, obviously, SuperStorm Stanley um, created that. Um, is that is that one of the the, the short term uh, um, challenges to 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 get a full dematerialization of shares? And and, and you know, what, what can you tell us about how long it, uh, that might take? I think things are accelerating. It's mainly the issue remains mainly confined in some segments of the fixed income world more than in the equity world. Uh, so I'm very confident that, uh, and that we are observing that in the countries where we operate. Every time we add a new layer of, uh, of technology innovation or technology convergence, we accelerate uh, one of these uh, things. But you need you need the the, the active participation of. Uh, of, of the market participants and the issuers, uh, because, but the more the more liquid an asset class is, the easier it is. The less liquid, the the, the, the more uh, vested interests are uh, to, to to manage. It's like it's more or less similar uh, to uh, the the prevalence of, of some OTC uh, trades on the phone for some asset classes uh, that 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 remain because uh, uh, for whatever reason. Uh, 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 phone trades uh, are, are, are remaining uh, active, whereas the vast majority of, uh, of assets are traded on electronic platforms. The same uh, exists in, in the CSD world, but the, the direction of travel is very clear. Um, we don't have much time left, sadly, but one thing I think um, I, I did want to ask you about. Um, clearly, there's a lot of talk about uh, central bank digital currencies. Uh, now they, they may remain a pipe dream. There may be um, plans uh, afoot. If people begin, if the central banks begin to, to test these, how does that affect a company like Euronext, either on the trading side, on the clearing, or on the um, the CSD? I mean, do you actually have do you have to upgrade systems? I mean, what, what's um 
What's the impact for a company like yours? No, I mean, we, we, we have to, to marginally adjust systems at very marginally. The, the, the issue, we are ready for a new wave of uh, digitalized uh, assets. It's not, it's, the issue is not a technological issue. The issue is a regulatory uh, issue. I mean, the reason why we remain cautious on some crypto assets is purely regulatory. We want to make sure that uh, uh, we, we, uh, we, 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 we operate uh, uh, trade products, solutions uh, based on crypto assets that are regulatory proven. If the, if the central banks are taking the initiative to, to create uh, and to, to, to issue uh, digital currency, uh, we welcome that uh, because it contributes to, to, to creating a proper regulatory environment for, for, for digital assets. But, but there is no um, technological uh, uh, issues at all to, to address that, that trend. There's no issue, say, for, you know, if, if um, there's a central bank digital asset that, that you know, the, the CSD need, would, would need to, to begin to move to blockchain technology as well to... to yeah, uh, but it's, 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 um, we're already prepared for, for, for this type of, uh, of migrations for all sorts of reasons. I, I told you that at the beginning of this conversation that uh, we spend a lot of time and resources about identifying precisely what are the user cases uh, for, for, for the deployment of, of, of uh, distributed ledger uh, driven type of uh, uh, platforms. And, and, and we are doing that anyway, because sooner or later it will, it will, uh, it will be deployed, uh, but not at the pace that, every peop that many people think and not uh, uh, with the scope that many people dream. Uh, so, so we, we we are we are ready for that move big time. And to, and, and just finally, I mean, and are your 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 personal thoughts. I mean, are you fairly uh, um, uh, optimistic that that uh, that we will begin to see maybe a test cases of, of central bank uh, digital assets? I mean, um, you know, digital currencies. I mean, you, do you think that this this is this is a real possibility that people should be uh, ready for? Yes, I think I think the the central banks are doing uh, exactly what they are supposed to do. They are doing that in a in a, in a consortium way, in a coordinated manner. Uh, the, um, the, um, the the Bank of International uh, Settlements in, in Basel is uh, as, as creating a sort of a sandbox, which is very active and and with very promising projects. Uh, but each uh, central bank has, the, has has their own labs, not always advanced with, uh, with the at the same level. And that, 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 that's going to, to yield soon. I mean, I like the concept that people who are in charge of uh, issuing currency, taking the bull by the horn and deciding what is going to be a currency and what is not going to be a currency. The, 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 if they don't do that, we are left with the far west approach of, uh, of uh, crypto assets uh, uh, proclaiming themselves that they are uh, cryptocurrencies. And, and that's, that's, that's not what, what you need to do. Uh, uh, you need to have people who are mandated by society to issue currency, uh, taking the innovative steps that, uh, that they are expected to do, and then slowly and slowly creating a proper digital currency world. Stefan, sadly, I, uh, we're out of time. We could, I could easily have gone on for another half an hour, um, but uh, that has not been granted to us. I'd like to thank you uh, very much for your time and your thoughts. It's been a, a pleasure, and I hope uh, to everybody watching, uh, you've enjoyed it as well. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.